And right now, Skimbo is going to kick the ball to Kim first to start this one. And he'll bring it out of his own end zone. Past the 20 and brought down at the 24-yard line. See how this goes. We haven't seen Kiv since the championship game at the Madden Challenge. We hadn't seen. And keep in mind, the guy, Joel, who we just watched play, Kiv knocked him out of the Madden Challenge. So that speaks wonders to Kiv's game right there. And that's a long time for Kiv to have to let what happened to him sink in. It, it's been festering. I'm sure he can't wait to get back on the field, and here's his first play. Wentz slings it outside, and here comes a quick second down. Yeah, and both of these players, you're not going to see them make a lot of bad reads. How we saw interceptions in that Joel Ghost game go back and forth, back and forth. You're not going to see this in this ball game. These guys are going to make crispy reads. They'll throw the ball away. They're going to both be in this gun bunch formation. They'll protect their quarterback. It's a two amazing offensive minds going up against each other in this one. Second down. Wentz throws it over the middle, and there is Grant. Past the midfield to the 42-yard line. And Jakeem Grant from the Dolphins hauls it in. Mike Skim clicked on, tried to get the swat, didn't get the animation he wanted. Kib with the possession catch, big game. Now on first down, low throw to Julio Jones, who somehow does a Houdini down to the 18. That was mad Houdini-ish, wasn't it? Little possession catch, bounce back up in stride. First and 10. Definitely looked a little awkward. We've seen some wackiness. Wentz now. That's a pressure, and I'll push him back to the 30 as Brown got in there. And Kiv's known for taking a lot of sacks. He doesn't force the ball down the field. And last year in our MCS championship, he was the most sacked player in the entire tournament, but he also had some of the best passing numbers. So he's definitely not afraid to take that sack, which is a good thing. You'd rather take the sack than force the ball into coverage down the field. Didn't make our final 32. Got beat by Killer Mike in the Seahawks Club Championship. He's trying to strike first. There's Hester. And Devin takes it to the 22. I should say, Scott, too, both of these guys rocking the same exact playbooks, both in the West Coast offense and the New England Patriots defense. That defense is known for being a hybrid style. 4 3 3 4, but it's all about that 3 3 5 odd. Third and 14. Went surveying. No one open. Thought about scrambling. And a great click in that sent Kraus. And that's going to force a fourth down. Yeah, when you say that click in, Scott. That's the mechanic where the play's going on and the quarterback snapped the ball. If you click in the right stick, the closest defender to the quarterback will abandon his assignment and go into chase ball after the quarterback. That's what you saw Skimbo do to Paulie Krauss right there. So holds him to a field goal in his opening drive. And now Kiv will give Skimbo his first look of the day. You see what, how many people do that pooch kick? I'm still surprised we haven't seen anyone do what Deliverance did, where he came out an onside kick. Has his hands team out there. Gets the hands team out there, then audible to normal kick return. So when you do the pooch kick, you got a speedster right there that's catching that pooch kick. In his case, it was Randy Moss. Yeah, and he had some success with that. It's very interesting. It's usually a copycat type league. We've seen Skimbo do this. Gets in that pistol formation, tries to see if he can get some movement along the line, and then he sets up into the bunch. By that time, Jamal Charles goes nowhere. Boy, Jamal Charles is phenomenal at Texas. Had some good seasons with the Chiefs, but some injuries has had him falling off from where he once was, but still serviceable for Michael Skimbo. Second and ten. 
Rolls to the left. And good coverage downfield. And now here's a third down. We see Skimbo roll out a lot. He's one of the best at moving away from the pressure with his quarterback. He, he's willing to roll out, scramble, and do what he needs to do to buy extra time to let his routes develop. It, it's not even a question in my, in my mind either, Scott. He is the best at that. And low throw to Brandon Cooks. And the speedster takes it to the 48. Good read right here by Skim. Quick hike throw, finds Cooks. But I want you to pay attention to it, Scott. When Skimbo drops back with his quarterback, watch how good he is with the movements. He's got to watch the blitz here, though. Kiv might be sending the dogs. Skimbo was ranked number one. Coming in to this ultimate league, but you can throw the ranks out the windows now. Ten games, 12 of these players will make the playoffs. Yeah, the only ranks that matter is the standings in this ultimate league going forward. Trying to get off to a good start, a nice throw to Grant. Low ball at the 35. First down, Skimbo. It's funny, these guys' game plans are just so similar. Same playbooks. They both love that 3 3 5 odd and the gun bunch. And there's Delaney. Is anybody going to catch him? Forced out of the seven. First and goal. Skimbo's willingness to check down Coltrane is amazing. He's not going to force anything downfield. If you give him the flats, he'll take the flats. He's truly surgical in his offensive approach. And Charles is actually going to lose a yard. Second and goal from the eight. Will Skimbo take the lead? He trails by three. Had X and found him. Touchdown, Skimbo. And gave a little look over his shoulder to his buddy Dub Dot. You just want to talk about poise. You want to talk about offense. You want to talk about preparation. You want to talk about world-class Madden. You're talking about Michael Skimbo at that point. 7-3 to three now with 58 seconds remaining in the quarter. And you got to call out, Skimbo's become a superstar. This young man from Claremore, Oklahoma. The only person to win two championship belts. I mean, we're here at the NFL Experience, and you walk around with him, and this kid's stopping him all over the place. They want to take a picture. They want to pick his brain. They've seen him on TV. And Skimbo's got a really bright future ahead of him in this whole competitive gaming esports stuff that's going on. Or spot me, please, in this division. He's actually in the crowd. Not playing tonight. Sure to see him down the road. So he's taking a long look at both of these guys because he's going to be in the same division. Should have got spot me up in the booth with us. We had Skimbo in the booth with us for a quarter yesterday during the club championship finals. They, they, they started tweeting at him, calling him Tony Romo. Where well, he was predicting what was going on. First and ten. Skim Romo. Spot me, please, is very well spoken as well. Knows a lot about the game, and um, he got to when he gets to this level. I mean, come on, it's such a class act. I think one of the most impressive things about Spot Me is he's a guy that has, you know, a wife, a kid. He works full time, full -time job, and he's still able to play the game at the highest level. So he doesn't have any. He has plenty of excuses, but he doesn't let those get in the way. There comes Sam Shields. Low cap and a lot of speed, and that's why he's one of the favorites. Yeah, that's Sam Shields. He's only a 59 overall on a scale of 99. It only costs you 14 cap. And he's been known to make some plays. That speed's all he really needs. So third and 18. Final play of the quarter. And Grant is going to make it fourth and manageable. On the other side with the first quarter coming to close. Skimbo seven, Kiv three. So at the end of one, seven to three.
Michael Skimbo looking confident, went down and got a touchdown on his first drive. Kiv stalled out in the red zone, and really, right now, that's the only difference in this one, RG. Yeah, but right now, Kiv's got a big fourth and five coming up, and he can't stall out right here. Michael Skimbo's too good on offense for you to not keep up scoring with him. This is a big play right here for the Kiva. Fourth and five. Here to start the second quarter. Kiv's going to go for it on his own 43. I'm Kiv, Shea Kivlin, Seattle, Washington. Bunch to the right, solo to the left. And Kiv and Pete Carroll are going to talk about it. No, no problem taking a timeout right there. This is a big play. It's the first half. You can't take those timeouts with you to the second half. Fourth and five. You better come out and cook up some of your best stuff right here against the number one player in the world, Mike Skin. Has time. Has a man. Devin Hester from the U. The speedster with the first down. Look at Kiv. That's just savage right there on fourth and five. Good route combination. An underneath crossing route. One over the top. Threads the needle. Gets the big first down and doesn't even give you a facial expression. How good was Devin Hester? Set all kind of kickoff return, special teams, punt, return records. And maybe the most impressive thing being the first player ever in John Madden football to get that 100 speed rating given. And well deserved. To our own rating czar himself, our new stat czar, Donnie Moore. There's Donnie Moore is. Now part of this big esports movement for Madden and really puts the time in the works. And let's be honest, he spends a lot of time in Microsoft Excel. Yeah, I mean, some of the stats that Donnie will find on these players and give back to us is just phenomenal stuff. One of the unsung heroes of the broadcast. You know, sometimes you sound really smart. He and a couple other guys are a lot of the reason why. It's pretty much him. In the red zone at the 15, first and 10. And there's McKinnon, and he'll pick up a few. That'll bring up second and seven. Trying to take the lead, trailing by four. It's like we talked about, Scott. Neither one of these guys making a lot of mistakes. Playing good John Madden football, good reads. Methodically moving the ball. This is just high level Madden. Carson Wentz using his legs to buy time and he'll just throw it away. And here comes a key third down in this one. Remember, he stalled out last time. Yeah, this is going to be tough. This is a hard seven yards to get you. Skimbo, when you can play defense and you're a world class player and you don't got to worry about giving up that deep ball. It really opens up that defense for you. You can see it's like he's got four middle linebackers with those safeties up. Good user, but it doesn't matter because Grant hauls it in. On well, that corner route. A little bit different reaction from Kiv compared to a guy like Joel after he makes a big play. Look at him. I scored a touchdown on Skim. I'm swagging around. I'm feeling good about myself. Young Kiv focused at the task at hand. Takes a little sip of water. Ten plays, 80 yards. And he takes the lead with three, 16 to go. I was going to say, let's be real. Kiv's got the best lettuce in the game, huh? I don't, I, you know, when we're, when we're out in California, I don't mind the holes in the jeans, but when it's like negative 10 out there, is, is that the move? He's a fashionable guy. He's got the coat on, the boots. See this throw again, and that's crispy find. Kib always, uh, Skimbo just always looks so concerned. He get, whether he's perplexed. A, 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 like, how did that even happen? That's not supposed to happen on me. And he throws the same route and maybe got away with one. Look at Skim's number. He's five for five right now. Scott, 86 yards and a touchdown. You see him, he just gets away. Nobody's better at protecting their quarterback than Michael Skimbo. If you're at home, you really need to pay attention to that. It's one of the small things he does that's just better than everybody else. He looked over Look at, at Kiv and that. told him. 
Good defense, and here on first and 10, it's much of the same. Second and 10, right dead at the 50. That small play right there is just something that contributes to Skim's greatness. He rolls away from the blitz, gets out to the left, and just throws the ball away. Doesn't force anything downfield. There's a hit. Lucky. Now they didn't call that a fumble. Third and 10. Like Dodge the, the bullet. Like the opposite of Romo out here. As soon as it's not giving him homage for something. <laughs> You're the jinx. It's got to stop. Third and 10. Wentz. And oh. Cooks just dropped it. That's a tough break right there for Mike Skim. But you see him. He keeps his composure right there. He's going to go for it on 4th and 10, Scott. This is a big play. This is a big play right here. Bunch to the left. Wentz. And Grant able to hang on to that one. 100 passing yards thus far, and it's a first down. A low throw pass with the possession catch. First and 10. 2.22 to go. Ball at the 36. Carson rolls away and throws it away. You should remember, Scott, this isn't just, you know, it's a regular season game, week one. Some implications here, but the thing that's cool about each one of these matches is there's $1,000 on the line for each match outside of the $500,000 prize pool. And that was a small window, but a big score. And Skim, right when I bring up the $1,000, he's thinking about securing that bag. It's a big route in there, a little rack catch, touchdown. The extra these guys, point up and good. These guys are just going to go back and forth all day long. This is what we've learned to expect from these two when they get on the sticks versus each other. Usually comes down to who has the ball last, and with 2.09, Kim's going to get an opportunity. And there is Devin Hester, and you bet he's bringing it out. So he'll go to work at the 29. Let's take a look at this again. This is a tight window. And Skimbo able to take the lead 14 to 10. This is a huge drive for Kiv. Yes, it is. 205, he has plenty of time. Julio takes a big hit. That'll take us through the two minute warning. But the ball at the 46. Wentz, and there's that Joey Bosa with a little bit of containment. And the clock is on the move, second and 14. Part of the reason people like that Joey Bosa so much, Scott, is he has a 90 power move rating and a 90 plus finesse move rating. So no matter what, when he's pass rushing that quarterback, he has a strong chance of beating that blocker and getting you a sack. 90 seconds to go in the half. And there is Devin Hester. Haven't seen a lot of him. But all of a sudden, he's a favorite for Kiv. And Kiv just staying calm, business as usual. Marching up the field against the number one player in the world, no big deal. This one's thrown a bit too far to the outside. It's going to bring up a second and 10 at the 40 with 112 to go in the first half. I'd be interested to see all the scores that these guys had in their history. I, I'm curious if any of the, the games ever went more than one possession. It seems like it's always just so close when these two play. A couple times it's come down to one play. Now Markham just shy, third and one. And we're going to have a minute to go here in the second quarter. These are two players that are familiar with each other. They have a lot of respect for each other. A wide open Grant. And Jakeem will put him in the red zone. 
And Skimbo uses a timeout. Stops the clock, maybe hoping to get the ball back himself. Trying to do some damage before half, but right now he needs to focus on making sure Kip doesn't get a touchdown here. A delay. Good job getting off the block and making the tackle second and 12. Timeout number two for Skim. He's got one remaining. A little bit of a different uh, emotional vibe than that Joel uh, <laughs> Ghost game, huh? These guys are letting their play do the talking. 46 seconds to go, ball to 17. Needs 12. Wentz going up top. I don't know. There's some rule somewhere that that might have counted for three. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've ever seen the throwaway just go <laughs> straight through the upright. Third and 12. Trying not to have to settle for a field goal here. Hit Skim out of his 3 3 5 odd in this game. He's been running a lot of that 1 4 6 dollar look against Kim. McKinnon. It's a safe call, and Skimbo will use his final timeout. Now, fourth and eight. Kiv will try to make it a one point game. Kick is up, and it is good. 14 13 with 20, excuse me, 34 seconds to go in the half. Oh, and here it is. There goes Skim. Taking a page out of Deliverance's playbook. Puts the hands team in and then sets up for the long kick. And there's Delaney. He'll take it. He'll get a block. That caught up in his own man and he knows if he could have ran by that block clean. Could have been interesting. Yeah, and that would have been big. All those extra yards would have been Significant for him on this drive with only 30 seconds, no timeouts. Skim going to do all he can to get into field goal range here, get himself some points before the end of the half. Kiv caught in the neutral zone. That'll move him ahead five yards for Skimbo. First and five of the 47. Just shy of midfield. And he's got no timeouts. Wentz, scrambling, throwing. Look at Skim, a little reaction, rare reaction there from Mike Skimbo. Trying to pass lead to the outside and couldn't find his target. Give brings the Pressure back. Look at all that space on the outside. Second and five. Skim, you got to protect the quarterback here. I don't want to sack, fumble, or force turnover. See if he can get out of bounds, and he will. Makes it to the other 47. He's got 18 ticks remaining in the half. It's ironic that the Patriots are playing the Eagles in the Super Bowl, but here we are with Carson Wentz in a Patriots jersey. Checks down and gets out of bounds to the 42 now. Remember, he's got Greg the leg. 94 overall. So he's flirting with field goal range. Got to get out of bounds, though. And he throws it again. And just like that, that could have been a three-point throw. Oh, that is going to be a three-point throw, bearing anything tragic on the field goal attempt. But he's in Legatron territory right here. I think he needs to be careful about if he runs a play, which he's going to do. If he doesn't get out of bounds or throw this ball away, he has no timeouts. I don't know how I'll get that field goal off. He's just going to spike it. Oh, I know what's going to This is brilliant. This is brilliant, Scott. He's just going to spike this. A couple more times so he can take seconds off of the play clock. <laughs> this is brilliant strategy right here. You call it brilliant, I call it diabolical. Third and ten. This is scum tactics at its finest, and I approve. A 
The lineup for the kick. It's going to be a 51 yarder before the half, and he fakes it. What was going on there, Mike Skim? I'm asleep. Did you see how frustrated Skim was right there? Still, still a second left. Yeah, one second. I'm shocked. I mean, we've seen Skimbo pull out the fake field goal and have success before, but those were an extra point situations on a PAT. That far, was he expecting to turn that into a touchdown? Did he press the wrong button? It's a good question for Adrian. Ask Skim what happened on that one if we get a chance. Throws it toward the end zone and it's picked off. And now you got to be careful not to give up the return. And Amos can't get it going, and that's how the half will end. 14-13, Skimbo with a one-point lead here at the half. An interesting chain of events at the end of the half for Skimbo. Would have had an opportunity to kick a 51-yarder, and then what the what? Yeah, he does a fake field goal. Well, it's, you know, it's not absurd, but from that far out, I, the chances of converting that for a touchdown with no timeouts, it just it, it, it seemed like a mental lapse that we're not used to seeing from Skim. So the start of the third quarter, one-point game between Skimbo and Kiv. And I know it seems like everyone has a rivalry with Skimbo, but these guys have faced each other quite a bit over the last couple seasons. This is the original Skimbo rivalry. Well, I guess the original Skimbo rivalry probably was serious. Skim Skimbo Mo. Yeah, probably Serious Mo. Skimbo yeah. Serious Mo. I, I, you can't take that away from them. That was a good rivalry. That's a good rivalry, too. What are, you, what, are, what are Skim's top three rivalries? What do you think? <laughs> Mo. For sure. Kim. Problem. Yeah, probably, especially with the the chain of events the other night. Yeah. Problem probably finds its way up there. Yeah, problem on the scoreboard against Skim now at live events. And the, ironically enough, Skim's got a rivalry with his good friend Dubby. They faced off a couple of times in these live events. It was this time last year, that was at Super Bowl 51, where Dubby beat Skimbo and then went on to beat Problem to win the Madden Bowl. Yeah. First and 10. One point game at the 48. Bunch to the left. Charles. Really hasn't been the answer for him. We talked about these bench players that they're going to have to be able to rotate, and you might want to try to find an answer at running back. The, the problem with Skim's offense is the only running play we see from him is that halfback draw it's, out yeah. of the gun bunch. He doesn't have the base, which was a big part of his offense last year. There's no inside zone, no read option. It, it, it's halfback draw, and that's it. And I, I think people have figured that out. Third and five at the 44. That's the opportunity to go up eight over Kiv. <gasps> Low Bad throw and it's picked. Oh, and Kim's letting him hear about it. A real bad read from Skim. Kim's asking him, what are you doing? And that's Duke Riley. Who? With the pick. Wow, big play by Kim and Skim. Not happy. The botched field, fake field goal attempt before half. An interception on his opening drive to start the second half. That was the most feared version of Riley. Oh, and he right throws back. a pick right, right back. back. And Skim's talking to him. Oh, he's pointing at him, Scott. Oh, they're getting chirpy. And you can't do that if you can't. You can't trash talk. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then you come back and throw it into double coverage right back at Skim. And Skim lets him have it. Oh, look at the look from Kim. Tells him to sit down. Got some action. Well, we might have to move this Skimbo and Kim rivalry into the number one spot for <laughs> Skimbo. Wow. Oh, that was some good stuff right there. 
And Kev, he doesn't look happy. Second and 10 here in the third quarter. 3.37 to go. The lead is one. There's Cooks. Oh, no. Kev might have woke up a sleeping giant. Did Mike Skimbo. First and 10 now. See Skim rolling out. Finds Cooks. Cooks, he's got some space. Brought down at the 31. I feel like if I had Skimbo's pocket presence, I'd never lose a game, Scott. The way he just rolls out, protects that quarterback, finds the open receiver, makes it look easy. That puts Skimbo in fake field goal range. <laughs> One point game. Uh, I, I can assure you. That play is completely out of Skimbo's game plan <laughs> after the way that last one went down. Skimbo has very little tolerance for poor execution. And yeah, those were points. Gets a block and slides down. Because let's think about this. You kick the field goal. Let's assume you made it. 51-yarder for Greg the leg. It probably would have gone through. You'd be up four points right now with a chance to go up 11. Yeah. I At the very that. minimum, you'd be going up a touchdown. Yeah. Second and seven. And he's been so good throughout the years, what I call double dip in the chip, which is a quick score before the half, and then in your opening drive, you get one. Not a fan of double dip in the chip. No, but you don't. Now, here's the, in real life, but if you flip the chip the other way and then go back to dip it in the side that you didn't dip initially, is that okay? This is why when we go eat wings, I get my own ranch. You know, I, you get your ranch, I'll get my ranch. Cause Cause it's I, like having your whole mouth in the ranch. No, 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 no. I take a bite of the bone. I dip the boneless tender into the ranch, take a bite, and then the other side of it that I haven't, then that goes into the ranch again. And on second and five, a rumble. And by the way, you lost me at boneless. So it's a bootleg double dip. I'm a bone-in guy, too. I, okay, all right. All I can right. Eat. I'm close enough to put hands on you. Third and two from the five. Wings out here in Minnesota and nothing like they were when we were out in Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo. Well, come on now. Buffalo. There's a reason they're called Buffalo Wings. You know, they were cooking with them wings, Scott. It's a big play. Third and two. Ball to five. Good hit. It's going to depend on the spot. I mean, He's going to be short fourth and inches. Now what do you do, RG? This is interesting. Got to go. I think if you skim, you're going to go for this. Got to try to sneak it. The problem with the sneak is, it's is a, a guy like Kiv's going to have defense, and it's not very powerful this year. The sneak is like a scratch-off ticket. You never know what you're going to get. Very true. Well said. And there's a move to the outside, and he just got to the line and was hoping to get some extra yards in the first down to back him up five, and he'll kick the field goal here, we assume. You see him usering with Jarrell Peppers back there. And it is up and it's good. Man, the heat was coming. Oh, man. Kim with a little glitchy jump off that line. Goes for the block. Unsuccessful. That's a win right there for the Kimmer, though. To hold Skim to three right there. It was after back-to-back -back turnovers. And a little trash talk in between. Uh-oh, Hesta. So Hesta with that R light up under him. He has that return ability which means his stamina bar when he gets the ball in a kick return stays full stamina the whole time so he can stay at his top until speed until he makes that first move until you try a spin or a juke or you get hit by a defender but until that happens you got full speed Dion also has that same chemistry two amazing returners one went to Florida State one went to Miami and let's be honest down in the state of Florida you got some speed yeah and with that ability, it's not a, you know, it's not a game changer. It's not going to guarantee a kick return every time, or it may not be a factor. But when it does kick in in, in that right time, it, it can be a difference maker. Second and 11. Wentz couldn't get that second foot in bounds. And now here comes a key third and 11 for Kiv, trailing by four with only 40 seconds to go in the third. It's interesting seeing Skim running this dollar type defense. Big dime, 146. We're used to seeing him in that 335 odd that he made so popular this year, but he's obviously watched some tape on Kiv and 
something about this big dime 146 that he likes against this gun punch formation. If you miss it, Skimbo actually used the time out there. He has two remaining. Bunch to the right, Jones solo to the left. Carson throws. Julio is going to make it fourth and manageable at the 33, and he's going to go with some tempo. Uh oh. Not a fan. This is it. This is a big play. Not a well, fan of the tempo. And, he and I like that by Skim right there. This is a big fourth down. You've already used one of your timeouts. You don't want Kip to hurry to the line, quick hike here. You're not in the defense you want to be in. I wouldn't be surprised. He's going to go to the 3 3 5 odd right here for a short yarded situation. Well, the other thing is, if yeah, you there have it your, is. That's the 3 3 5 odd. Scott. If you have your line on aggressive and then they go tempo on you. And wide open Julio Jones. What I'm saying is, if, if you have your line on aggressive and you go tempo and you quick snap it again, you might get five yards, and that would have been a first down, but instead. Yes. Finds Julio. That's a really good point too, Coltrane. Really good point. Good Wide kid. open is Julio. And that'll bring us to the end of the third. Skimbo with a 17-13 lead, but Kiv is on a drive. Back here at the start of the fourth quarter. Four-point game here in the Elite Division B. These guys will face each other in week 10, the final week of the season. It might come down to that to see who wins this division. I don't want to wait that long to see the rematch. <laughs> one more. Five minutes to go in this one. Wentz oh, topples over his own lineman, and that's the third Sack of the game for Skim. Kev just tries to scramble, wins, trips over his own offensive lineman, falls flat on his face. Three yard loss. Second and 13 at the 35. Ooh. And that's a nice find. Almost picked off, but Hester able to clutch it. From disaster. I mean, I know this is a catch, but look at Skim click on to Butler and run and almost undercut that throw for an interception. Skim knows he almost got that one, almost made a phenomenal play. See Serious Mo in the background there. Looking on. Scrambling, and he'll just live to fight another down. Second and 10 from the 20, and a field goal just won't do it. Serious moment attendance right there. You saw in the shot. He's the first belt winner in this MCS era. And when he won that belt, he beat none other than Michael Skimbo. It's been that a championship game. Long, long grind for both of these guys. Throughout this whole season, as Wentz gets loose, still on his feet. And not only is this game a grind, but this is going to be what this whole Ultimate League is all about, RG. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you're talking about the top 16 players in the world, Scott. There's going to be no sweet games. Everybody's going to be elite level, world class competition. And to me, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened the competitive matter. First and goal at the seven. Watch the fullback dive from Bo. That's where he goes. Maybe eked out a yard. Second and goal from the six in a four-point game. Got to punch it in here. Has all three timeouts. Given the single back doubles flex formation. A new little look that we haven't seen from him. He's got to flip it. See the pitch play art. Gonna be a pitch left here. And he's gonna end up facing a delay of game. Ooh. And that'll back him up to the 11. Look at Skim, he's thinking about it. And he will take the penalty, and he had to think about it because now young Kiv's got more room to operate. 
Yeah, I mean, if you skim, you really are thinking about the climb in that. Kips. And now you got 21 yards to pass it in there. Exactly. Counting yeah. the end zone. And Kiff so prolific and surgical with that passing attack. But nonetheless, I think the fact that Kiff can't get the first down, Skim said, why not? Let me back him up a little bit. He's going to hand it off. And McKinnon gets submarined at the seven. Kiff only has six rushes for nine yards. We told you these guys like to air the ball out, Scott. We weren't joking. It's like a mid-80s Dolphins and Chargers game. Two down territory for the Kiffer, in my opinion. Third and goal. Skins got to watch that deep post run from Wentz. the tight end. Quick drop, quick throw. Out of the back of the end zone. Now it's fourth and goal. RG, you've been here a million times. What do you do? The way this game's gone, if I'm Kiv, I'm going for it right here. And he will. Yeah, this is big. Bunch to the left. Biggest play in the game. Julio is so low to the right. Got to make sure you eye the quarterback here on fourth down. It's going to be insane. Skim's going to send the dogs, I think, right here. Yep, there's the blitz. Wentz, low throw, oh! and Hester. Touchdown, Kev. And young Kiva comes up big on fourth down. In a hell game with the number one player in the world, Mike Skimbo. Yet to beat him at a live event. And he's got the lead up three with 2.35 left in the fourth. How will Mike Skim respond? And I should tell you, Coltrane, he needs to respond here because he used those timeouts earlier in this half. He only has one left. So if he's not able to turn this drive right here into points, it's going to look gloomy and grim for Mike Skim. Three-point game. 2.35 to go. Kiv with the lead. And, oh, boy, I hate to bring this up, but when's the last time Michael Skimbo <laughs> steps out of the eight? That gets pretty – I mean, take a look at this again when before you think, I query. Right when you think you got the scum kick taken care of. Look at Kim. Showing some emotion. Mo with a little fist bump in the background there as Skim shows some frustration. You know who Mo's rooting for. My question is, is when's the last time Michael Skimbo has lost back-to-back -back games? That could happen. Problem got him yesterday. That's a good question. Kiv might get him now. Top Madden in the building. Been all the way back in Madden 16 at that MCS championship, that stiff one. A is open. And it's dropped. Took forever to get there. What are you doing? And look at Kev. He's starting to show some emotion. He can sniff the W. Third and ten. The deficit is three for Skim. Oh, Skim looks worried up there on the stage right now, Scott. He's got the ball at the eight. Standing in the shadows. Oh, look at those face cams right there. Look at the focus of those two players. You got to run your money play right here. You need 10. Got to get rid of it. And he gets oh. batted down. Oh. Oh, Looked like he had a man. And it was B coming across. That was Keem Grant. And that would have been a first down. Kim not happy. Kim trying to establish, de establish dominance in this division right here. With a big week one win over Skim. Fourth and 10. This is pretty much the game, Cole. Got to get to the 18. Quick throw. And you're kidding He's me. He's got it. He's got it. And Kim says, you're bad. Skim says, you know what? It's bad. It's awful. But I'll take it. Threads the needle. Possession catch. And he's still alive. And that's discouraging if you give because you give Mike Skim a fresh set of downs. He's known to do something with it. He saw Grandpa drag back there. Sort of walked away from it. Couldn't believe it. Oh, this is big. This is the nitty gritty, Scott. Two in the morning. Go oh, to the outside. Oh, and Cooks. Skimbo's living on the edge. Look at Kim. It's a game of inches. As Al Pacino said, you got to fight for that inch. 
any given Sunday. Not a battle. Wentz. Throws off his back foot. Late throw to Grant. I think after those last two throws, you got to be a little careful. And with a the drop there, it's going to be second and ten. Yeah, this is officially the Guap drive. Low throw to Cooks. Picks up. No. They got to mark it at the 48. Boy, he's had so many tight throws. 170 yards for Cooks on 10 receptions. 17 yards a clip. Even I know that. These are the type of matchups we're going to see in the Ultimate League all year long, Cole Trade. Elite level competition. Fighting for their piece of that $500,000. The glory, the belt. It's a big hit right here. Boom. Use a hip stick, too. Second and three. Remember, he's only got one timeout. Had to use two earlier. And RG is gasping on every throw. Was, Third and two. Scary. Looked like it might have got yicked. Bunch to the left. Grant to the right. Needs to get to the 38. And, he and that's it. it. That'll do it. Oh, man. Killer showing some emotion. Wow. Kim looks angry. I don't know if you'll like him when he's angry. He's got B open early right there. And throws it to the other side. And he's going to bend the knee. And they'll shake hands. And Skimbo will not use his final timeout as Harrison Smith with a game saving interception 20 to 17. Kiv is your winner. And so that's how this one will end. Put another one in the rivalry between Skimbo and Young Kiv. Just a three point game. That's. Last two times Skimbo's come out, he's lost both of them. I'm just impressed with young Kiv coming out with some fire in his heart, showing some emotion in a hell game against Mike Skimbo. Comes up big on that last drive. And people don't know, young Kiv is one of the most consistent players we've had on the circuit for the last several years. He hasn't won a belt yet, but besides that, his accolades are way up there with the best of them. And boy, did that young man put on right there in that game against Mike Skim in week one. If that's what Ultimate League is going to be about, <laughs> I want more, Coltrane. I think we'll come back for some more of that, that action. Kev with a big win. He's standing by with Adrian Lawrence. Kev, very dominant performance over Skimbo. You had yet to beat him at a live event. You've attained that. How do you feel? Uh, that don't matter. I beat him the last two times. So hopefully we're going for another third when we match up again. And it was a very tight game the entire time. What makes it so difficult to beat Skimbo? Uh, he's great on offense. He makes good adjustments to your your offense as well on defense. He's a, a good second half player, and he's one that like has knocked me out so many times. So it's it's a great win right now. And in the ultimate league, we have a change up in the rules where you have more access to more players. How are you, how are you capitalizing on that to improve your game? Well, I'm a mutt head junkie, so I'm gonna look through all the players that I can find and see who's glitchy and stuff and uh, see what I can do with those 70 players, really. Well, you definitely dominated with them today. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you guys.